Hello friends. I look a little different today. Did you notice anything? Huh. Yeah, I'm wearing my veil for my wedding. I feel a little weird, but I'm also really excited. <laughs> um, so yeah, I recreated my wedding day look for you guys today. Um, my wedding colors were blush pink, rose gold, and white, and greenery, and it was beautiful and I loved it and I was so proud of it. Um, and this is the makeup that I thought would go well with it. It's very me. It's sparkly, it's pink, got some rose gold in there. It's awesome. I think this look would be great for, I don't know, I would go out on a date like this. This is not out of my, my usual comfort level. Uh, so I would wear it for anything. I think it'd be great for most special occasions, but I do think it's especially good for brides. I got married in Texas, in summer outside so it was a little hot and my makeup stayed on all day and I was really proud of myself and it actually did not want to come off that night I had to scrub my dang face so I think this is a really good option if you need sweat proof makeup so yeah if you want to see how I did all this please keep watching we are gonna start off with uh, priming the face so step one for me is gonna do some sort of luminous moisturizing primer. I'm gonna be using the Glam Glow Glow Starter in Nude Glow. Um, you could also use the MAC Strobe Cream um, in whatever color you would like. I'm partial to the pink one because that's what my face looks like. Um, but I'm just throwing that all over because I do want to be glowy. This is definitely what I did on the day of. Um, and I'm gonna let that sink in for a little bit, a lot of it. Bring it down the neck a little bit. If you want to bring it on the decolletage, hopefully you won't have one of these. Um, you certainly can. I am not going to right now, but I did on the day of. Because um, my dress was low cut, kind of spaghetti strap. That sounds so 90s. It was actually pretty. Um, and then we're going to go into eyes. I, while I'm waiting for this to set, um, I'm going to do old standby Urban Decay Primer Potion and prime the lids. Whatever primer you do pick, pick one that you have used a bunch and you know is absolutely budge proof. Um, I did cry on my wedding day, just a little bit, not too much, which I was thankful for. I did not wanna be bawling my eyes out. I'm gonna throw a little bit of concealer on top, blend that out. Just gonna blend it out with my fingers, YOLO. Um, yeah, I did cry on my wedding day uh, during the vow because husband's vows were A++, 10 out of 10, would recommend, would marry again. Um, and it, it got me in the heartstrings. Um, next I'm gonna go in, yeah, that's smooth. So I'm gonna go in with the Estee Lauder Smoothing Primer. Um, you can use whatever primer you need. I got some pores that I wanted to fill, so I'm just gonna dab that in the problem areas. And then I don't want too much product because it can start come, kind of balling up on the face. Um, and with pore filling primers, you typically want to pat them in instead of rubbing, which feels really weird and inefficient, but it does help. Um, this primer also, I think it helps with the longevity of the makeup, so I'm a fan. Okay, um, let's go in with the eye color. Okay, I used a combination of my ColourPop palette and the Huda Beauty Mob Obsessions. Um, so I'm gonna go in with the ColourPop first on a fluffy blending brush. And I'm going to go into the color wake up call just as oh wait before I do that um before I do that I'm gonna go in with a nude color I'm gonna use here I'm gonna use hear me out from ColourPop it is a nude it looks white on camera it's not it's just a little bit lighter than my skin tone you know pasty girl problems 
Um, and I'm just gonna pat that over the lids to set the concealer and the primer and add a little bit more coverage. Okay, now that the lids are set, now I'm gonna go in with that fluffy blending brush and the transition color. And um, I used this transition color because it is so light. I really took my time getting ready. I think I woke up, let's see, we had to be at the venue at three. I think yeah, that sounds right um <laughs> we didn't get there till four whatever story for another time um but I think I started getting ready at like 8 a.m and then I think my girls got there no I take that back my girls got there at eight I started getting ready at seven so at seven o'clock I was up with some under eye masks on uh a hydrating mask on my face and uh, started curling my hair because I had to curl my hair and then pin my hair to try and give my curls a fighting chance at staying. Um, and I don't know that they did, but you know what did? My makeup. My makeup was on all freaking day and I was thrilled. Um, okay, so that's all for the transition color. Now I'm going to go into the Mob Obsessions and I'm going to go into this middle color. I have no idea what it is, but it's kind of... It looks kind of grayish brown on camera, but it's really, it does on the swatch too, but it goes on so much more red when it's on the eye. But it's a transition color that's darker than this transition color. Um, so like I said, I really built it up. I'm using the same brush. I'm not bringing it onto the lid, just the transition. I'm not winging it out too much. I'm not worried about the shape yet. So my, I should probably explain why I'm using pink. My colors were like ivory cream, generally in the white family with blush tones and rose gold. So I really, uh, I really stuck with those. They were so neutral anyway. We had a lot of greenery as well. Um, the ceremony was in kind of like a garden setting. So for my makeup, I kept it very neutral, um, except for the eyes. I went for it on the eyes. We did light pink and sparkly and I loved it. You know, I'm that type of girl. Like I would wear that makeup on an everyday basis, but I just wanted it to be super perfected for the wedding day. Um, cool. We're going to leave it at that for the transition. I'm going to go in with my Morphe crease brush with this top right, top left. That's my left when I look at it, it's left. I'm gonna go in with that color and start building out the shape. So it's gonna go into the outer corner. And this color is super plummy and beautiful, I love it. I love this palette, I think the the lightest shimmer which is probably my favorite color of the palette is kind of underwhelming and maybe that's just because i've swatched it so much like it looks amazing but it does not go on the eye very well which is a bummer um but it's kind of a pretty dupable color so it's fine um blend things out once you've got some depth and some shape sorry guys i really should have zoomed you in here we are um hope you can see that a little bit better oh if i stay in frame you can Wow, best YouTuber ever. Oh yes, YouTuber. Another reason that I went with this color scheme for the eyes is because my eyes are bluish green and it just contrasts so nicely. I'm going to take a kind of large pencil brush um, with the color Feathered from Colourpop.
don't stress too much if it starts to blend out too far because we haven't done our concealer yet so we can cover things up pretty easily okay so that's pretty much it Ooh, oh hold on that's pretty much it for the crease right now um now we're gonna go on to the lid and i'm gonna take this profusion flat shader brush and the color liar liar from ColourPop. it's a sparkly pink um this is kind of just a general formula if your colors are you know whatever color just stay in the same family and follow this formula so do transition color um darker color darkest color and then a shimmer if you want it or you could do a matte i think a matte would be really beautiful with this that's not my vibe i'm definitely a sparkle queen so that's what i did but um you could definitely make this whatever you need it to be um yeah put that on the lid into the inner corner don't be afraid to bring it up a little bit we're not doing a cut crease but i think sometimes that sparkle can blend into the matte really pretty um yeah okay so that's what we're working with so far so now i'm gonna go in with the stila glimmer and glow perlina y'all know i love this um it's really good i'm taking it on the back of my hand Oop. Okay, I'm gonna take this small flat brush. I think this brush is from Avon, I'm not sure. It was gifted. Um, need a small mirror. I'm gonna take this wherever we took uh, Liar Liar, focusing it in the center first. I'm not gonna take it up too far because it will transfer while it's wet. Um, but then slowly bring it in. And I'm not taking it into the inner corner. wow oh wow i just love it so much okay so that is what we're currently working with um got some nice glimmer some nice glow all right so we're gonna leave the eyes like this while i work on the face um <clears throat> i used estee lauder double wear this ish is full freaking coverage this will cover any sin you've ever committed in your whole life but it will last you forever and ever amen it will cover up everything is great um before i did that i did do a little bit of the hourglass veil powder um just a light dusting underneath you'll see why just about that much not very much just on the t-zone um thusly okay so that's just the lightest dusting ever just so that you can feel it and not see it um that will help smooth things over um as well as kind of blur so give this a good shake get my foundation brush at the ready okay i cleaned off my hand because that is my palette shake up the foundation we're gonna do two pumps to start um and then i'm using the sephora pro mini 55.5 this was a rouge gift from last year um and we're just gonna do one side at a time We're just building up light layers. We're not going in with full intensity right off the bat. Oh, I am also in the color Ecru 1N2. Wherever you want more coverage, try tapping instead of buffing. 
Okay, now we are going to do um, cover any blemishes. NARS, always, always and forever. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you are not a subscriber and you don't watch my videos. Hmm, calling you out. Only one way to fix that. Subscribe, please. Thank you. Go watch my videos. Watch them all the way through. Thanks so much. <laughs> I'm a brat. Um, I'm covering up what pimples you can see. I waited until after foundation to do this. Um, because this foundation is so full coverage, I'm going to cover up this little guy on my collarbone because that guy's rude. How dare you? This is my fake wedding day. Respect it. Okay, my battery, <clears throat> my battery died, so I had to let it charge, and I ate some macaroni and cheese. Wedding day! <laughs> um, so I haven't touched my makeup since, which it has definitely set. It's probably been an hour. Um, so I need to do some under eye concealer, because this is looking a little cray. Breaking everything. Well, we're also going to get the crease of the nose. Um, the reason why I do that is because as women, generally, we get red there. Um, it's just based on hormones. It's a natural thing. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't cover it, right? Okay, I'm blending that out with a Real Techniques uh, Deluxe Crease Brush. Okay, and then we're going to take the Hourglass Veil Powder again to set the under eyes. Now, I should mention that I have oily combination skin, okay, and then I also got married in the middle of June outside in Texas, so it was a little hot, a little hot. Um, I think it was like maybe in the high 80s, so <clears throat> not that hot by Texas standards, but still pretty hot when you're wearing a big ol' wedding dress. Um, I'm using Mac's Mac Studio Finish Powder in NC15, as always, for a little extra coverage. Taking it down the neck. I'm gonna hit my face with some all-nighter. That was probably entirely too much. Um, but I just wanna start layering up the product so that it is locked in and not moving. <clears throat> now we are going to go into the under eyes. I'm going to go back into the Huda Beauty palette with a super small crease brush. Um, I'm not going to bother zooming you in. I'm going to take that middle color and go under the eyes. Um, I am going to do some liquid liner. Hi Chihuahua. Oh no. Yeah, okay. Wait. I just bought a new eyeliner, but I didn't throw away my old one. So now I gotta figure out which one's the new one. I think this one's the new one. We shall see. I'm using the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Liner in Intense Black. This is the original, not the super fine. Pray for me. Eyeliner can smell your fear. So stay confident. Don't let it know. It's gonna be alright. Don't let it dry out as you're talking to your camera. Oh my god. Told you. <clears throat> okay. Okay. We're good. We're good. We got this. No big deal. Mm-hmm. 
pay. There's one. Boom. Freaking did it. Okay, now we're gonna move on to, uh, let's do eyebrows. Okay, I'm using NYX Micro Brow Forever and Ever. was a lot of product honestly um now i'm going to take some clear brow gel and run that through these bad boys just to keep them in place My eyebrows are typically sisters, not twins, but uh, these look pretty good. <clears throat> okay, um, I tried to do false lashes on the day of, and they just, they just didn't feel like me. Um, so if you typically wear lashes, I say go for it. Um, I did not. So, um, I think I used my Caution Mascara with CoverGirl Clump Crusher Waterproof on top. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to do the waterproof right now because I am not wearing this all day. One thing that I did do on my wedding day that I do not normally do is tight line. Um, but I'm using a brown on my top waterline instead of a black to match that wing liner. It's just a little bit softer and then if it transferred, which it typically does on me, um, it would not be so stark. Alright, so that is the difference. You can see my waterline right there. Right there it is not. Okay, um, I feel like I need to define my lower lash line just a little bit more. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take Feather from ColourPop, that kind of dark reddish brown, and just put that on the outer third of my lower lash line. Okay, so now we're going to bronze. Okay, we're gonna take a medium mocha from Too Faced on a chiseled cheek brush, chiseled angled cheek brush. Take it right under the cheekbone, on top of the forehead at the hairline. All right, and now I'm going to go in with blush on my Real Techniques blush brush. And I'm gonna take, uh, what is this, Tarte Party. That's P A A A R T Y. I'm not making it up. Um, it's an Amazonian clay 12 hour blush. 12 hour blush. Um, they last for 12 hours. Who doesn't want that? Throwing that on the opposite of the cheek. Go a little bit heavier with the blush than you normally would. Um, just for your pictures. Just trust me. The lighting in your pictures is probably going to be a little bit blown out. That's just wedding styles right now and so you want to kind of counteract that RIP my forehead um, if you want totally optional take a little bit of blush 
and just do that. It's just a nice little pop. Uh, makes it look nice and cohesive. It's great. Alright. Um, now we're going to do highlight. I'm going to take the super small brush and I'm going to go in with Champagne Pop from Becca. Um, because I just want to bring in a little bit more of the rose gold vibe. And I'm putting that like bronzer, blush, highlight. And I'm not going crazy with it. Doing a pretty light hand because A, this stuff is potent. And B, shimmery highlight is a trend right now. It's not something that's been popular for more than seven years maybe. Um, and so you don't want that super blinding Nikki Tutorials highlight in photos that are going to be passed down for multiple generations, hopefully. Um, you want it to look classic and neutral. I just wanted to add some because A, I like it, but B, I think it does look nice in pictures when it's just super subtle. Um, it just gives a nice little glow, a little bit of dimension, um, but it doesn't look, you know, like 2019. I did not want my makeup to look like 2019. Okay, so now let's go into lips. I'm using my favorite Rimmel lip liner that does not have a name anymore. Oh, I think it's 15 pink. Super, uh, that makes sense. I'm just gonna line my lips with this. Make sure that your lips are super hydrated, pretty. Um, you can pick whatever color whatever color you do pick for your wedding make sure that it is long wearing I would go well if you're going something neutral which is the route that I did something relatively natural um, make sure that it's either a super long lasting like a liquid lip or something or B super sheer and easy to reapply if you're doing a bold lip you have to go long wearing um and i can show you that in a second as well okay i did not overdraw my lips i didn't really go outside the lip line at all um i just stuck with my natural lip line now uh i used for my lipstick um one of the ysl rouge volept rouge volept number 44. this was a sephora sample i love my samples um but this was also great because my bridesmaids had pockets and so this went actually in my officiant because my officiant was my bridesmaid very confusing uh, this was in her pocket the whole time so like before dinner handed this to me after dinner handed this to me halfway through dancing handed this to me i could have kept it in my bra if i really wanted to but i didn't um but this is super sheer nice easy to apply don't need a mirror boom feels really great on the lips super hydrating um so if you have any like crustiness it's good but also it's not super um opaque so when you do your kissing the you may kiss the bride uh it's not going to transfer so that was really important to me and ultimately why i decided to go with that one now if you want to do a bolder lip let me walk you through this let me okay so um we're gonna leave on that lip liner we will do this Urban Decay Vice Lipstick in Backtalk. Yeah, this is a comfort matte, so it will stay on. Mattes generally are more long wearing than a gloss or some sort of glossy texture. Um, I will apply this on top of lip liner. Very key, you must lip line. You must line your lips if you're wanting it to be long lasting. Okay, so the lipstick is on. Now what we're going to do, now we're going to take some toilet paper or some tissue or whatever and 
peel it apart thusly so that you just have one ply. Um, you can take one, one ply and do the dab off. Yeah, like we're in the 1940s, love it. The other ply, save, get some loose powder. I'm gonna use the hourglass again, that's there. Um, I'm going to take like a fluffy blending brush, put this over your lips, close your mouth, Okay, I powdered my lips through there. If you really want to, and you don't like your brush, because this is gonna get lipstick on it, you can straight up powder your lips. Now, after that, go in with more lipstick. And then powder one more time. Okay, do the finger check. We're good. And that is your lips. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that, oh, this won't transfer, you'll be good to go. It'll still transfer. Um, although, not nearly as much. Right there is the transfer. So it still comes off a little bit, but not nearly as much as it would have if you didn't do those steps. And yes, it's extra. And yes, I look like an actual serial killer, but here you are. It's beautiful, it's wonderful. I would not recommend topping this with a lip balm. It's just gonna cake up. You can do that process maybe one more time. So maybe three times total. Depends on your formula. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a risk, but if you practice this ahead of time, get really comfortable with it, you should be good to go. I would just pack your lip liner with you. Um, you could st stick that in your bra, stick it in if you have like a handbag, your bridesmaids, whatever. <clears throat> you could touch it up with just a lip liner. If you wanna bring your lipstick for safe keepings, I'm not gonna tell you no, I'm not gonna tell you that's a bad idea, but I think at least bring your lip liner. Um, if you feel like the line is messed up, you can take some concealer and just, sharpen it up um if y'all want me to do a, like a video routine on how to get perfect bold lips leave that comment down below i'd be happy to do it if you do want to add a little bit of shimmer to this lip just take a little bit of eyeshadow i'm taking that same pink eyeshadow and just doing that you can't see it when you but it does add just the slightest luminosity. Yeah, that's nice. All right, um, let's do some setting spray one last time. Mm. Okay, and that is gonna be it. Okay, and that is the finished look. Um, this is how I wore my makeup on my wedding day. I did it myself. Um, it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I did do a lot of makeup trials. So that is my tip from me to you, along with all my other tips. Um, do some trials. Even if you're gonna hire a makeup artist, do some trials on yourself, um, just to kind of see what, what you like for your face. If you normally don't wear a lot of makeup, don't go full glam. Your person, your husband, your wife, your whatever, your spouse loves you the way you are. Please don't ever feel like you need to look a certain way or be a certain way to get somebody's love. You don't. You're perfect just the way you are. Go with what feels natural, what feels comfortable. If you're a full glam type of girl, I give you permission. I, you can stack up those, those lashes, live your dream, I support you. Uh, if you're somewhere in the middle like me, maybe give this a try, right? Shameless plug. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you're getting married, congratulations. Marriage is wonderful. Um, and this is a great time in your life, so enjoy it, have fun. Um, if you are not getting married, that's okay. I hope you get to go to a wedding, 
and hope it has an open bar. All right. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something cool and please comment down below what kind of videos you'd like to see next and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe. Follow me on social media. It is at Emily Fun Bun everywhere. Cool. Thanks guys. I will see you on Monday. Bye.